Hello and welcome to Hokey Focus 2020. We would all have liked to have been able to meet you in person this weekend and take pictures similar to this for you, but the current situation makes that impossible. So we hope this video and the accompanying opportunity to chat with our student ambassadors and advisors will provide you with some insights into the civil engineering profession and the civil and environmental engineering program at Virginia Tech. My name is Roberto Leon and I currently serve as the Associate Head for Undergraduate Studies in the Charles Avia Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, which is housed in Patton Hall in front of the drill field at Virginia Tech. My presentation today is centered around the first three questions shown here. What is civil and environmental engineering? What can a civil engineer be? What makes civil engineering special at Virginia Tech? And these three questions are a prelude for you being able to answer in the fourth one is where do you see yourself in uh, civil engineering at Virginia Tech? Throughout this video, what I hope to transmit is the idea that you are our future and that our goal here is to train you to be the infrastructures integrators of the future. So what is civil engineering? One can give you many definitions. I can begin by saying that civil engineering is everything that you see built around us and that civil engineers create and connect the world around us. Civil engineers on an everyday basis design and supervise the construction of roads, buildings, airports, and almost every other piece of infrastructure that you see around you. But more importantly, civil engineering is a people-serving profession that holds the health and welfare of the public at its greatest trust. So what do civil engineers do? Let's listen to this video and get some ideas from three young civil engineers. Civil engineering is everywhere. It's in every road you drive. It's in the clean water you drink. It's where you live, work, and play. It really is all around you. Civil engineers help improve the lives of millions of people every day. We're going to meet three civil engineers and look at some of the real ways that they're helping communities right now. America's waterway system is home to an entire ecosystem. The animals that live in the water depend on us to keep their communities clean. This is James Wannaberg. James is working to create a healthy habitat and ecosystem in Washington, D.C.'s Potomac River. He's a resident engineer for the Blue Plains Tunnel, part of the D.C. Clean Rivers Project. This tunnel project is using a massive drill that's almost 30 feet high and over 400 feet long. This is my office. We're, uh, we're here for DC Water working on the Clean Rivers Project. This project is, uh, is intended to eliminate sewer overflows into the DC waterways, uh, which ultimately go down to the Chesapeake Bay. So we're cleaning up the rivers. Uh, right now we're working on a deep tunnel. It's called the Blue Plains Tunnel. And uh, this is going to capture stormwater underground and allow that to be treated later after a big rain event. Uh, the tunnel boring machine we're using here is an amazing piece of equipment. It's, it's fantastic. It's a 26 foot diameter uh, and it uh, bores horizontally underground uh, like a drill and uh, it holds back all of the earth pressures and the hydrostatic forces that are below ground at that depth. It also allows us to install the precast rings. They're made out of concrete precast segments and that ring forms the pipe that will be there permanently after we're finished digging the tunnel. Civil engineering is a, it's a fantastic profession. Uh, it's, it really deals with engineering all of the world around us. Uh, there's infrastructure on the surface, uh, things that people see and use every day like roadways, bridges, uh, things of that nature. Uh, then there's also a tremendous amount of civil engineering below the surface that no one ever sees. And that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, in, my, in my view, that's uh, one of the best parts of civil engineering is working on the underground side and it's, it's, it's so much fun. I never imagined I'd be able to work on something this cool, but I always had an interest in big projects. I love being a part of it. It's a great mission. I come to work every day excited to do this, and we can't wait to see the end result of all the hard work. My name's James, and I'm a civil engineer. Hurricanes can destroy entire communities that then take years to rebuild. Maggie Jakes is a civil engineer who went to Haiti to help restore clean drinking water after the hurricane. Maggie was forever changed through her experiences in Haiti, helping a desperate community and touching lives. So my junior year in college, uh, my professor did a presentation on his trip to Haiti, 
and what he found when he was there. And their biggest problem was drinking water. They didn't have clean water to drink and thousands of people are dying each year because of this. Uh, so he was trying to get civil engineering students from Merrimack to travel there. 2011, we traveled to Haiti for the first time. Uh, we went to a town called Marmon, and this is where severe cholera outbreaks hit every year. Um, there's a big clinic there, and we saw all the cholera tents still set up from their recent outbreak. The system was damaged by the 2010 earthquake, and it was broken in a few places, but the water was relatively clean. So we made a few repairs to that, and they were just so grateful that we were there. Because we were there, we gave them hope. In the United States, we're really lucky to have access to clean water, and that's thanks to years of hardworking engineers. My experiences in Haiti and um, my later years of college really opened my eyes to how many possibilities there really are for civil engineers to help. My name is Maggie Jakes, and I'm a civil engineer. Ah, baseball. The crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd, the amazing ballparks that are home to our national pastime. Meet Aaron White, the civil engineer in charge of designing the hurricane-proof retractable roof at the Marlins Park in Florida. This is the first roof in the world that was designed for a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, it weighs roughly 7,800 tons uh, of steel, and uh, it was actually designed to be positioned in a slightly open position for the hurricanes to let wind into the space and then back out to decrease the wind pressure on the roof. Obviously, anytime there's a threat of a rainstorm during a game, uh, you have the problem of a rain delay. And if you know Miami, it rains here pretty much every day during the summer. So they have the ability to close the roof very quickly if there's an impending thunderstorm or rainstorm. So there's a guarantee that the game's gonna happen every night. And that's extremely important. Uh, the mechanization is very efficient. Uh, it's designed so it only costs about $10 in electricity to move the roof open and close. So early on in the design, we tried to establish what the minimum height of the roof over the playing field actually is. So we uh, scoured the internet and found some equations that are put out uh, by NASA, I believe, for the flight of a batted ball. And through those equations, you can actually calculate the flight of the batted ball at all different angles of the ball leaving the bat. So if it goes straight up in the air, it goes straight horizontally, or it's some uh, nice trajectory of a line drive. And so we actually created those shapes uh, early on and put them over the playing field to make sure that the shape of the roof that was above the playing field would never uh, come in contact with a, a batted ball. We really interact with a lot of people, so there's a, a common conception that engineers just kind of go in, the, in their office and work by themselves doing calculations, but that uh, couldn't be further from the truth. I'm Aaron White, and I'm a civil engineer. Civil engineers have cool jobs. They're creative and innovative people. They make an impact and change lives, making our world a better place. The bottom line, if you want an amazing career that makes a difference, then do something real. Be a civil engineer. As the providers of most infrastructure, civil engineers face numerous challenges in the near future, including looking at alternative energy, autonomous vehicles, issues related to climate change and the development of smart cities, the utilization of advanced materials and new construction techniques, and most importantly, also being leaders in the policy and funding mechanisms for all of this infrastructure that we will need. And in order to do this, civil engineers are ideally placed to be the system integrators because we cut across most of the areas that are pictured in here. Among the major challenges is what to do about cities. How do we sustain the current megacities? How do we devolve into smaller rural cities? How do we create cities in the ocean in the, and in the Arctic areas? And how do we create cities off planet? Just in this area of smart cities, there are enormous challenges and enormous opportunities for civil engineers. Let's look at just one of those challenges, that of the creation of a floating city. To look out 50 years is not normal. But when we see the world freeing yourself from today's constraints, we felt we had to take a step out that far. We're 
here to create a professional tool rooted in reality of the future that's highly plausible because we're doing research with subject matter experts. And because 60% of the world's population live in coastal areas, we're starting with the floating city. When we did the work on the mobile offshore base, we had a system which is seven times an aircraft carrier. If you get very heavy weather, it will tear it apart. They are now actively looking at putting large arrays of solar floating in space and using microwave to bring the power back to Earth. At night, that solar-powered array will lower the kelp to a place where there's more nutrients. The sun comes up in the morning and they can grow. Once this gets going, it's almost an unlimited amount of biomass that can be used as a source of human food. The master plan of today will be a kind of DJ that will be there for 15, 20, 30 years, constantly tuning to make the optimum atmosphere for the people in that city. It's also very, very important to do this in a way that is respectful of the context that it's in. This is an industry that has built nations over thousands of years. Civil engineers will need to become masters at systems integration. In this virtual environment, users will engage the analytical tools of today on the world of tomorrow. This is going to be a very exciting ride. So how does civil engineering at Virginia Tech fit into this whole picture? Well, we have a great tradition of serving people along the motto of Virginia Tech, which is Ut Prosim. We have been around for a long, long time. This is one of the oldest civil engineering departments in the nation. It has been a pioneer in incorporating women and minorities into the profession. It's a department that is very highly ranked uh, by US News and World Report, both at, at the undergrad and graduate level, and also both in civil engineering and in environmental engineering. Um, our program is consistently ranked in the top 10 for producing both master's and uh, bachelor's degrees in the United States. We produce about half of the civil engineers in the state of Virginia. We have a, an enormous alumni base and network of alumni across uh, the United States, a strong research program. Currently, we have about $40 million of research contracts ongoing in the department. And we just received, once again, full accreditation for another six years by ABET, the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, without any comments whatsoever, which means that we pass the review with flying colors. This all reflects a top department in the nation. Our mission as the VIA Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is to develop a new generation of leaders and professionals that will be entrusted by society to achieve a sustainable world and raise the global quality of life. These are very much along the same aspirational goals of the American Society of Civil Engineers Vision 2025 Challenge. In order to reach that level of leadership and professionalism, we have to train our students in at least five key areas being planners, designers, constructors, and operators of infrastructure, being good stewards of the environment in that process, and also being innovators and integrators of technology in accomplishing that task while managing the risk and providing for a more resilient set of communities. And that is all achieved also by engineers becoming leaders in public policy. Our undergraduate curriculum, which is schematically shown here, provides a very large breadth of an education, but in particular in the area of civil engineer, 
We concentrate in eight areas, construction engineering, environmental engineering, geotechnical engineering, land development, materials engineering, structural engineering, transportation engineering, and water resources. And for each of these eight areas, we have a fundamental course and you will be required to take six of these eight uh, fundamental classes. But more importantly for us, because of the size and breadth of the experience of our faculty, we can offer numerous undergraduate technical electives. Here are a bunch of numbers of the courses that are available under each of these different areas. But along with courses in other departments, this provides you with the opportunity of increasing the breadth and depth of your education uh, in order to fit your interest, uh, both in, in, in the short term and for a long, longer term career. We accomplish the teaching through what we call the CE community that constitutes about a thousand people all together, about 60 professors, 33 staff, 650 undergraduate students and about 300 graduate students, all of whom are characterized by being very young and enterprising, very diverse and inclusive community, and one which is at the cutting edge of the teaching and research enterprises. Just to give you some examples of some of the people in our department, Dr. Matt Edwards has led the studies of lead contamination in the water supply of Flint, Michigan, and many of you might have read about this pioneering work. Uh, Dr. Edwards has worked uh, for a very long time in this area and has had tremendous national impact in terms of both technical and policy issues. Dr. Lindsay Marr has conducted pioneering research in airborne transmissions of infectious diseases, and you can imagine that with the current pandemic, her research is now at the forefront of the interest of a lot of people. Another example is Dr. Nina Stark, who is a leader in the area of beach dynamics and offshore renewable energies. Uh, this, of course, has everything to do with uh, rising sea levels, climate change, and the need for alternative forms of energy. So all of these people, as an example, provide the kinds of research and education that you will be exposed to if you were to join the VIA Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. I could probably write a similar uh, set of slides for every member of our faculty, uh, but I will uh, leave it at this uh, for right now. You can go to our web page and look for more information on our professors. This is all, of course, also reflected in the very high ranking of this department. Here are the latest rankings for the undergraduate and graduate uh, programs. We are a top 10 uh, department, both in civil and environmental engineering at both the undergraduate and the graduate level. And we are part of a very strong college of engineering. Of course, this means that, that your degree from Virginia Tech has some real value to employers. But while we emphasize the learning portions, we also want you to become involved in outside activities. And so we have a very large number of organizations that sponsor all kinds of social fundraising and technical activities, uh, including, for example, concrete canoes competitions, um, uh, Habitat for Humanity, and uh, similar enterprises. This year we were scheduled to be the national uh, site for the steel bridge competition that uh, the American Institute of Steel Construction runs. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, that has been canceled, of course, uh, but we hope to have it here next year. Another interesting example of this is the um, Earthquake Engineering Research Institute undergraduate competitions in which Virginia Tech participates. And this is a, an undergraduate endeavor in which uh, you build a model and you take it to the national uh, conference and you compete against a number of schools, both nationally and internationally. The next uh, video shows the behavior 
at the end of the tests of the Virginia Tech uh, multi-story structure. We also encourage study abroad. We have um, programs in Putacana in the Dominican Republic that look at airport operations and clean water and things of that nature. We have a course on bridges and society that takes a trip to Europe at the end of the semester. And we have developed and had hope to implement our first CE fall semester at the Virginia Tech campus in southern Switzerland. This, uh, again, because of the coronavirus, has been postponed until next year. But we strongly encourage uh, intercultural activities and experiences because, in the end, we are a connected world. The department provides a lot of scholarships to undergraduate students. Uh, we offer over $200,000 of scholarships each year. Most of these awards range from about a thousand to four thousand dollars, and we have special uh, via undergraduate scholarships uh, that provide in-state tuition for a year, and this is a, a sort of an additional scholarship that is very prestigious and uh, it has been endowed by the via family, which named the department back in the late 1980s. We are very connected with industry. We work with industry in every phase of research and teaching, and each semester we hold a career fair. Uh, this year, over 100 companies came to each of our career fairs, and that's just for civil engineering. They came from all over the United States, and these um, career fairs also offer the opportunity for undergraduate students to uh, interview for internships and full-time uh, positions at these companies. So in civil engineering at Virginia Tech, we involve you, we challenge you, and we want you to create your own future. And so I hope that this has inspired you to claim your role in civil engineering and environmental engineering at Virginia Tech. Thank you for your attention.